So when is a triangle not a triangle? When it's not triangular. Of course. So I'm Pete Lockett. Welcome to the uh, introduction to the world of uh, introduction to the world of triangles. Um, Again, this is the, uh, you know, often on the receiving end of many jokes, the triangle player and all that. You know, we know all those jokes. And um, in actual fact, the triangle is, is, uh, uh, is not an easy instrument to play if you play it r rhythmically. I mean, actually, to be honest, even if you have to count off 640 pages of a piece of music and then do one hit, that's not easy either, actually. You've got to really concentrate to get to that point for that one hit on the triangle. Anyway, triangles come in uh, many many different uh, many different shapes and shapes and sizes. This is a, a smaller triangle. Of course earlier we saw that the circular triangle philosophically I don't know that there is such a thing, but we have one here in rhythm, a circular triangle. Now this is uh, a, a mainstay. This is something that uh, that you would use in sessions. Um, a lot. It's one of those things that in in you know pop and rock and, and different music, one of those things that's I call it like an invisible percussion instrument in that you put it in the mix and you actually you can't hear it. The listener they, they wouldn't know it was there. But when you take it out there's a huge gaping great big absence um, when it's not there. And it does such an amazing job in that super top end frequency that it's a really vital uh, you know thing to have in for some for some tracks um, one of the things with percussion and you know for those you know, your drummers that are, are watching this and thinking about learning a few bits of percussion like we've been looking at some some basics here in this in this series one of the things you really need to be thinking about is is frequencies so um, for me as a percussionist, if I go into the, to the studio and, and uh, the drummer has laid down a load of uh, stuff that's mainly, uh, you know, kind of low or bottom end, like floor toms and, you know, it's a very kind of low end stuff, then I'm going to try and aim for more top end things like shakers, triangles, bongos, stuff that will cut through. If it's a regular type of, uh, of drum set uh, approach, bass, kick, snare, then a lot of stuff in the mid range would would fit in in terms of the the tones of the the percussion and then if the drum set player is playing more top end uh, heavy uh, stuff then the low end percussion is going to work a lot better so thinking about frequencies is is a really important thing and of course we can be aware of that um, all the way through even with these few basic things that we've started to look at in these uh, in these rhythm articles you can think about frequencies and think about what to put on uh, now the triangle is one of those things that would pretty much work across the board even if the drummer is playing top end stuff this is even higher so this is that's why it works with so many uh, in so many uh, different musical scenarios. Similarly, with the shaker, the shaker because it's uh, it's got a very rounded attack and, and sound, will kind of won't really conflict with something like hi hat or cymbals or other top end stuff that a drummer might uh, might use. So shaker and triangle are very useful in putting putting into the mix with with drummers without contrasting and conflicting and you know getting in the way um, of what the of what the drummer uh, might play so the first thing um, that, that we would look at is the is the playing and, and holding position now with these triangles um, some people will have some some uh, you know attachments so you can hang it from uh, or you could hang it from a stand for example and play it and of course that's very easy or you can have something that goes around your finger and you can hold it and play it which allows it to resonate this the playing position of this triangle is for me in the studio is without any straps and I kind of let it rest on the on the first finger and uh, that's the that's the playing position these fingers come round and grab so we've, got, so we've got open and closed now I'll just show you um, something we had prepared earlier so this is the uh, circular triangle that we uh, were so excited about before um, now I'm just doing this to demonstrate the idea of what you could have on any other triangle in that there's a, a, a clip and something that goes over your finger so it allows you to so it allows you to completely let the thing resonate if you want. So for the 
for the lessons, we're going to look at the triangle um, in this manner. So we're holding it with the finger and we've got open with the triangle beta, of course, is a vital, important component of this whole scenario. Open, closed. We also have grab, which we'll look at a little bit later as well. So we're just going to start with simple open, closed, closed, closed as eighth, as eighth notes. Notice that I'm closing and hitting at the same time. You can actually, as we'll, we'll look at in a later example, use the closing simply as a closing of the tone without a hit. For now, we're going to play a stroke with the triangle beta and also close at the same time. So for example two, we're just going to add another open note towards the end of the bar. So we have two open notes in the bar. Example two. Also be aware of how much you are muting the triangle with your holding hand. So this is completely held tight and I'll slowly open it. You kind of get a harmonic. So completely closed, harmonic, open. So depending on you know, the piece of music or whatever, you, however you want to approach it, you might want to play the closed notes either slightly, uh, you know, less damped so you get the harmonic or completely closed um, so you don't uh, get the uh, harmonic. So, example three, we're going to go back to the pattern that we've looked at before with the cajon, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Open, closed, closed, open, closed, closed, open, closed. And again, the, the triangle beta is held, you know, more or less in the same way um, as you would hold a drumstick. You've got your fulcrum there and um, obviously it's not, not as long as a drumstick. This one's got a, a kind of rubber thing on the end so you can get a different tone with the triangle if required. Right then, so in example four, we're going to look at that 3-3-2 pattern, but we're going to drift between eighth notes and sixteenth notes. One two, three, four, and. Notice the beautiful resonance of the instrument. It's a great instrument, the triangle. Really works brilliantly in, in, in tracks. And uh, just try it. Try it on some stuff yourself and you'll be surprised at how much it, 
it cuts through. So example five, a very simple pattern, closed open, closed open. This is really effective. Deceptively simple. When you hear it in a track, it, it kills it. It's like really great. One, two, three, four, and. And finally, example six, we're just gonna put another uh, open note towards the end to resolve the bar in a different way.